Hello everyone, this is Renan from Developer Soapbox and today I'm going to show you how to create a uh, RESTful API using Spring Boot and uh, specifically uh, Spring Data and uh, we'll do this in like less than 10 minutes uh, if you're fami familiar with other frameworks like uh, Rails and you know your Rails developer friends are telling you how much easier it is to create in using that framework or Python using Flask um, you know, you can definitely show them off using um, this particular setup. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your browser and go into start.spring.io. And this will allow you to generate a Spring Boot project in only a few steps. Um, you can actually choose what um, type of build tool you want to use, uh, even what kind of language you want to use and then the specific version of Spring Boot. In our case, we're going to use uh, Maven. Uh, we'll stick with Java and we'll go ahead and use Spring Boot 2.0. Um, I'll leave the group and artifacts as is. And then here you can actually specify the particular dependencies you want to use. In our case, I'm going to use JPA and REST re repositories, REST repositories how browser and I'll show you guys at the end of the video what this does and this is pretty awesome and then uh, we'll use a h2 database um, to, to set this up I mean this is kind of a testing project if you're doing kind of a real project you probably use uh, MySQL or Postgres but for for now we'll just keep it as h2 and go ahead and click generate project to generate that now go into the location where your browser downloaded that zip file to and go ahead and extract it. And in my case I'm going to be using Eclipse to open this project, uh, specifically the um, Spring Tool Suite, which is simply Eclipse with the uh, Spring plugin. So if you just go to uh, File, Import, and this will be Existing Maven Project. and then just go ahead and browse to that directory. In my case it's downloads and demo and hit OK and finish. And it should be importing all that good stuff in. And what we're going to be doing for this particular example is we're going to be creating an API to update a database with our favorite beers. Uh, very simple, you know, similar to a to-do list, but since every single example out there already uses a to-do list, I figured I'd do something a little bit more fun um, and different. And since this will be a, a list of our favorite beers, uh, for th first thing we're going to need as far as code is concerned is a entity to map to our beers table. So I'll just go into the generated package here, do uh, new class, and my class name would beer, hit finish. And this will have uh, three properties. First one is an ID. Second is a name for the name of the beer. And third is a double for the ABV, which is the alcohol content. And let's go ahead and generate getters and setters. So just go to source and generate getters and setters for everything. And there we go. Okay, so now we just need a few different annotations uh, to make the JPA work. Uh, first thing is go ahead and add in an entity annotation to our at our class level. And this basically just tells JPA that this is indeed uh, an entity that maps to a database table of the name beer. Um, second is go ahead and make tell JPA that this is our ID for the record level on the table. And then since we don't want to generate the ID ourselves, go ahead and add a generated value annotation to the ID. And this will basically just make it so JPA generates the values for this particular field for us. Now that we have our entity class, the uh, second thing we need is the actual repository. Um, basically, the class that will manage any um, any CRUD operations to this particular table. 
So just go ahead and create an interface and I'll show you guys why it's an interface in just one second and we'll just call this REST repository okay. and what we're gonna do is make this repository extend a string repository which is CRUD repository and for the CRUD repository you just have to specify the particular class that this repository will operate on which in our case is beer and the type for the ID of beer which if we go back to beer and then we just need to add one annotation to this interface which is repository rest resource okay so two things about this interface first thing is by extending CRUD, CRUD repository we're essentially getting a bunch of different uh, CRUD methods um, for this particular uh, entity so things like you know, a find by ID and post and delete and so on. All of that is already done for us be behind the scenes by Spring. Second thing is repository REST resource. This annotation will basically create the API for you. So essentially, once we start off this project, it will generate the API based on, um, you know, just a, a set of sensible defaults. And we'll see that in a second. But before we start our project, there are um, two last things we need to do. First is uh, set up our database connection, and then we'll uh, add some sample data to that. So uh, if we go into our source main uh, resources and open up application properties, and here uh, to, s to basically tell Spring Boot what, the, what our data source is, uh, we're just going to add one property, which is spring data source dot url and since this we're, we're using h2 the url is jdbc h2 and it's a memory database so this is how you specify that and then the name of our database we'll just call it beers and then to actually seed some test data in what we're going to do is create a new file within the same directory so just a standard file and this has to be called data.sql by convention. And I'll go ahead and open it within the same ID for you guys. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I went ahead and just pasted the code so you guys don't have to watch me type this out. Um, I'm just, I just have some DML on here to add three records into my beers table. And as you can see, we don't have to specify the ID since that is a generated value. So now let's test it out. Let's see if this works. Um, so uh, one thing that I do want to mention in, in case uh, some people might be confused, like wh where is the database, right? So since we're using H2 and this is a, uh, we specified here that it's an in-memory database, what's going to happen is whenever we actually start off the project, uh, it'll, the, the pro program will actually create the database, uh, cr generate the actual database table, and uh, and seed in the values of this data.sql. And like I mentioned, uh, this is based on convention. So simply by having a file named data.sql within our resources directory, the a Spring Boot knows to look into that file for any uh, seed data. But uh, before I start off the, the project, there is one issue that I caught. Um, which is I did not specify a, a strategy for the uh, value generation. So let's go ahead and specify that. So strategy here um, should be generated type dot oops, identity. Okay. So to actually run the application, go into demo application.java and run that. And there we go, servers up. So open your browser and go into localhost 8080. And like I mentioned, um, Spring Boot has tons of sensible defaults, uh, similar to something like uh, Ruby on Rails. So um, the default here is, since our entity name is beer, it'll basically just use a plural of that. So if we go to beers, there we have it there, at, at least as far as our get is concerned, this is, um, it's returning JSON, right? So we have a collection of beers, and for each one, we'll have our beer um, 
object, right? So there is basically that, that that's the data that we seeded within our data.sql file. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to show you how to do like posts and deletes, right? So I could, since I am using Linux here, I could use something like curl. Uh, but this is the really cool thing about, uh, again, using Spring Boot is it actually provides you with a browser, um, something similar to like a SOAP UI or uh, something along those lines. So if you just go to localhost8080 uh, slash browser slash index.html, this is the page that's going to come up and it'll have basically all your resources, right? So here, I mean, you can do a get, which is basically what we just did by calling the URL directly, but you can also do a non-get, right? So uh, here, let's do a post, right? Which will insert a new one. And if I do, let's say, I know, oh, ABV, you know, sh strong beer, some random strong beer. And if I do post, make the request, if you go back here to refresh, there's there's our beer, right? If you wanted to actually delete a record, uh, same thing. So go ahead and actually let's go back to index, um, go to beers, non-get, and we'll do a delete for by ID, right? So let's do beers one, make the request. And if I go in here, it deleted my first record, which was for highlight. So there you have it. I mean, um, I know a lot of people will probably say, well, you know, you said this is as uh, quickly as uh, Rails, but, you know, so Rails scaffolding will provide you a lot quicker functionality. Well, um, you know, keep in mind that whenever you're setting up a Rails project, uh, you, um, before you can do scaffolding, you also have to specify uh, stuff like the database connection properties and so on, which I, I did do within this example. But uh, I mean, as you saw, just by simply um, creating a repository with a few lines and uh, just one annotation, we're able to create an entire API, um, you know, which, which is pretty awesome. So uh, I really hope you've liked this video. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If, if you like to uh, basically receive a notification every time I, I put a new video out, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much.